Hey guys, number one Marmaduke fan here. Welcome to ASMR listening to the heating unit hum softly in the background because uh, I'm plugged into the wall because I'm working in, I'm holed up in my studio today. But uh, Star Wars, Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison. I reviewed issue one last month and I really liked it. And I finally sat down to read the rest of the five issue series. Highest recommendation. There is literally an unspoilable moment in issue five. I will not spoil it. It's on the level of Darth Vader saying to Luke, I am your father, that great a spoiler. So I picked these up just because I'm sad about the new Star Wars movies, but I don't want to make 30 videos where I explain uh, why I'm not happy with the new Star Wars movies making the same points that a hundred other YouTubers have. I want to go find some good old Star Wars stories that really tap into what make the original trilogy work and, you know, f find a positive rather than just complain about the negative. And Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison, wow! Alright, so I haven't, I actually haven't sat down and finished Rogue One yet, I'm like halfway through it. For like a month, I don't watch movies anymore. But I have re watched and rewatched the scene of Darth Vader cutting through the rebels probably 50 times. I love that scene. Uh, that scene is Darth Vader. He is a six foot tall guy in black armor who just rips through everybody and scares the pants off of you when you're six. And Darth Vader in the ghost prison taps into that aspect of the character, like the, phys the physical, intimidating, awesome effect of the character and taps into kind of the tragic uh, willpower of the character. I've said that Darth Vader is a powerful man who is a slave. And the whole time I was reading this, I was thinking Darth Vader is a individual with willpower who devotes his individual force of will to a tyranny. He's a great tragic uh, character. And the original trilogy, uh, not, not the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy kind of tries to get this across. I think ultimately he comes off a little whiny in the in the prequel trilogy, but uh, like I love Alex Jones's weird explanation of the prequel trilogy where he makes he, he just points out how interesting the political intrigue of it is that you might have missed if you were just groaning about Jar Jar Binks. Uh, and I, I, I like Return of the Sith. The, the dumbest line in uh, Revenge of the Sith is when uh, Anakin says, if you are not uh, with me, then you are my enemy, and uh, Obi-Wan says only a Sith uh, deals in absolutes. Uh, the problem with that line being that Obi-Wan Kenobi is making an absolutist statement. Uh, it doesn't really make sense for Darth Vader to be a moral objectivist and for uh, the Jedi to be moral relativists, but what I think that uh, Darth Vader in the Ghost Prison is doing is it's actually kind of it's giving us a little bit more subtext than the movies offer us, which is generally what the pattern I've noticed in a lot of the books is they're either absolute crap, like awful, dumbest books I've ever read, or they're taking the Star Wars story and they're going beyond the movies, where the movies are all about condensing everything, getting it really exciting, like they're just fun, dumb. I could watch, you know, uh, A New Hope a hundred times, and I never worry about, oh, are this, uh, the Rebels terrorists because they blow up the Empire's ship? Because it's just such a fun, perfect movie. But if you get into the expanded universe, you can start asking questions like, uh, why do the Jedi suck, <laughs> suck so much? Like, one of the things you pick up is the Jedi have kind of this weird uh, Zen Buddhist philosophy that obviously you know, denies human passion, that denies human love, and that obviously is a big motivating factor for Anakin falling to the dark side, because the dark, dark side offers him emotion, it offers him passion, it offers him drive, it offers him these deep human emotions that the Jedi just ignore. So even though the Empire and the Sith are evil, there's a sense where, in which the Jedi kind of deserve it. Like, the Jedi have been uh, responsible for genocides. The Jedi uh, don't have kind of a checkered past, but I think the beautiful theme of it is, is that a good reason to overthrow the Jedi and start a new empire just because you're unhappy with the current order? And despite the Jedi's flaws, I think the, the old Republic uh, was obviously superior to the empire, but the empire offers peace. It offers stability. And there's also like all this great like back and forth stuff about what the empire is going to be in Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison. Is the, is the empire purely an instrument of Emperor Palpatine's will, or is the empire potentially a tool for... Uh, creating peace in the galaxy because if it's creating peace in the galaxy you can see why people would get attracted to that but if it's just a uh, tool of Emperor Palpatine's will 
you can see how people would become jaded about that. So excellent, highest recommendation, get it, get it, get it, get it. All right, now I'm gonna flip through and show you cool stuff. So the covers are by Dave Wilkins. I think some of his poses are a bit uh, stiff like this one. They look like kind of like posed toys, but I think he's a good painter. So this is my favorite cover because it's actually picking up on a motif I've never noticed, which is that Darth Vader's helmet has a skull-like quality to it. You know, the teeth and the, sc the skull nose and the big gaping eyes. Well, wow, like how have I never realized that about Darth Vader? That he's got like a samurai helmet and his face literally looks like death c c uh, come walking towards you. That That's great. Uh, the interior art is by uh, Augustin Alessio and this is like some master class art. Uh, I've criticized some of the Marvel Star Wars comics for, I, I say it looks like they photoshopped the movie characters' heads onto two minute sketches and none of it works together. Uh, this is actually all put together well, where uh, Alessio will start with like a solid underdrawing and then he'll do like some cool p digital painterly stuff on top of it, but you can still see his underdrawing and all like the cool details like the girl in the bikini ba back there, right? Like he doesn't kill his underdrawing with the paints. He just adds kind of like a moody uh, textured atmosphere with the paints and the, yeah there are little touches of realistic faces but it's all, it all it's all still stylized and cool so this is actually like a I think it's called like the European it, it's kind of a bande dessine style I think is the term for it but uh, rather than just like aping that style uh, Alessio actually makes beautiful art in that style and it's absolutely fantabulous uh, jumping ahead uh, Darth Vader has to be in character there has to be a moment where you as a your inner six-year-old says, wow, Darth Vader, Darth Vader is so cool and so scary, right? And so he comes to Tome, like this, the cadet for the Empire's first uh, graduating class, and he says, follow me, like, like that's like, G it's probably an allusion to Jesus, right? But Darth Vader isn't Jesus, but he's this big, tall, charismatic, powerful force of will who kind of commands your respect just from his, his sheer power, but he's devoting that all to his evil purposes. Uh, there, are, I'm not going to spoil all of them, but pretty much every line, uh, I want to get the script writer, because this guy did such a good job, I want to pay attention. All right, the script is by Hayden Blackman. I'm going to be looking for Hayden Blackman, because every line he gives to Darth Vader, Darth Vader is in character, and Darth Vader is evoking that sensibility. Uh, he... Is that the line I was looking for? Okay, yeah, so this guy dies. Uh, Lord Vader, help us. I cannot. You have already given your life for the Empire. Don your breathing aid, Lieutenant, or you will be of no use to me. He, the only value human life has to Darth Vader is utility to himself and the Emperor. And later, of course, we've learned that he's planning to overthrow the Emperor. He, that's what he asked Luke to help him do. At this stage in his life, this is a young Anakin Skywalker. He is still madly devoted to the Emperor. And that's a part of his tragedy is, like Gollum, Gollum loves and hates himself. He loves and hates the ring just as he loves him and hates himself. Darth Vader loves the Emperor, and the Emperor completes him, in a sense. And then over time, as he comes to understand he's a slave, he starts to hate the Emperor, even as he serves the Emperor and devotes all of himself to the Emperor. Oh, what a character. All right, that's all for issue two. Uh, issue three, I'm just gonna flip through and just show you cool stuff. All right, they do some like, cool things where, like the Jedi, you know, they aren't entirely queen, uh, clean. Uh, they have like this sort of Guantanamo Bay kind of thing where they want to keep their prisoners of war somewhere, but they're, they, they're like really concerned about their uh, having good conditions and good health care. So it's almost kind of like a comment on America in a way, but not in a cheesy, you know, cheap political way. Like the Jedi are kind of getting up, the horrors of war are forcing the Je Jedi to compromise their principles, but they're still trying to be like humanitarian and preserve all life. But then you start to wonder, well, gee, is that really a good idea, Jedi? Because then a guy like Darth Vader comes along and he can weaponize all that and turn it against you because he's a lot more uh, utilitarian. He only cares about what, what serves his interests. There's also a lot of great uh, rotational energy in Alessio's uh, drawing style. Like He's not just posing little toy figures and copying that. He's getting the twist through the arm into the cape and down into the billowing cloak. And that's a recurring theme throughout all the action scenes is there's a lot of uh, not just like punches going on, but lots of spiraling energy and you can see the body twisting and turning in space. This is a nice little page where the two of the characters explain their backstory in kind of a nice parallel fashion. Uh, issue four, I don't think I marked anything 
in issue four. Uh, I like the uh, General Gentis, the headmaster. He kind of represents a, a person who serves the Empire, but wants the Empire to actually provide peace. He's tired of endless war. He's tired of Palpatine using his soldiers, who he perceives as his children, his sons, as cannon fodder and just them all dying in mysterious circumstances. So he wants to, a political coup to try to establish an empire that's more about like law and order and let's stop all of the, this endless war and this endless uh, foreign engagement. It's great. Oh, I, there was a great scene where there was like a whole contrast between the perspective of the characters where uh, this guy is a little bit more no nonsense. He's a little bit more about the business of the empire and you know, establishing order and uh, leading people. And Darth Vader is just a blunt force trauma instrument of killing everybody in the Emperor's path. And those are two completely different perspectives that are forced to work together in the Empire. And they don't really work together. Uh, in issue five, there's just one panel I want to show. Look at this panel. Look at this pose. Look at every ripple going down his chest. And then this big like beefy arm and leg like I've never seen Darth Vader drawn like that it's got so much power in it so like I said before issue five is unspoilable it is Luke I am your father level impactful couldn't believe it kind of a story perfect if you are unhappy with the new Star Wars movies if you're even unhappy with the prequel trilogy there is so much good Star Wars out there uh, Darth Vader in the ghost prison highest recommendation there's a trade paperback i think marvel has the digital comics or go to your local comic book store and see if they've got it there that's it i'm a marmaduke fan i love you guys catch you later